reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you have it, say, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, all right. If you need me to wait a moment, we'll say wait. All right, I think everybody's ready. And it reads, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Mm, my, my. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We're going to take one verse out of that scripture, that last verse, verse 6. You can put that back up there. Verse 6 of Psalms 23. It says, surely. Somebody say, surely. Mm, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're going to talk for the next few fleeting moments from the topic, goodness and mercy. Somebody say goodness and mercy. If you're watching online, just go ahead and put hashtag goodness and mercy. All right. We've heard many messages preached and taught about the, on the life of David the psalmist. We see him throughout scripture in many facets of life. We see him on the mountaintop moment when he defeated Goliath and when he was anointed king. But we also see him in his low times, uh, such as when he sinned against God and the various times his enemies almost killed him. But regardless of where he was in his life, his life was founded on his relationship with God. No matter where you see him, no matter where you find David, he was always chasing after the heart of God. For he said in Psalms 42, as the deer panted over the water, so my soul longeth after thee. We see him where it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. I want to bless his holy name. Yet, 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 David sinned at times and messed up. But wanting God's heart, he repented and came back to the Lord. You must understand that you may sin. You may, you don't practice sin, but you may sin. You may make a mistake, but get back up and get back to the Lord. Don't stay there where you are. You may fall seven times, but get up and God and go run back to the Lord. And so David knew very well. And he wrote about here what is probably the most profound, popular scripture that a lot of people know, the 23rd Psalms. Some people who don't even go to church have heard the 23rd Psalms. This psalmist David, he knew God was a shepherd that provided all his needs to be met and causing him to lie down and rest in green pastures. In other words, in other words, David knew that there was the places of fulfillment and blessings in God. Mm. Yeah, he, he knew God to be a restorer of his soul in times of brokenness and one that led him in righteous pathways for his name's sake. David, David knew God to be a protector. Uh, that even when he went into the valley of death, he knew he had nothing to worry about. Oh, bless his name. Because the Lord was certainly with him. He says there he had a rod and a staff. God was even preparing, watch this, tables before him in the presence of of his enemies, as if there was already certainty to victory. Uh, David knew God to be that, to be the one that anointed him, uh, causing his cup of joy to overflow. God had proven himself over and over to David that he, that he would do that to you. Anything you need, anything you want, any moment, any time, for any reason. He is God and he is our shepherd. 
And I'm here to let you know if you're following him, you'll never want for anything. Oh, yes, I know that a lot of times there's some stuff that we, we just want, think we have to have. But if you really take a look at it, you have everything you need. Like you sometimes, you may not have what you want, but you have everything you need because God provides for his children. But the Bible says the cattle of a thousand hills belong to God. So if the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God, that means I know that I can get me a steak every once in a while. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But I want to tell you now about David, uh, verse 6. Let's look there. Verse 6, it says, Lord, all of my life. Uh, look what it says there. All of the days of my life. Lord, all of my life you've been there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's saying that surely uh, you were there watching over me. Watching when I was watching over my father's sheep. And I had the rest of the lion and the bear. You were with me, Lord. Hallelujah. When I stood before the giant of the Philistines, uh, you were with me, God. When Saul tried everything to kill me, uh, he, when Saul tried to do what he could, and when I was playing the music to calm his spirit, you were with me. You were there with me when I went to get the ark. Uh, you were there with me when I brought it back to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, you were there with me through every war I had to fight. Uh, you were there with me even, watch this, uh, when I committed adultery and needed to be forgiven. Mm, yeah, all my life you've been there. You've got to realize that when you thought that you were alone, God was right there with you. Hallelujah. How do you know? Because you're still alive right now. Hallelujah. You got to realize that no matter what's going on, God is right there with you. Uh, yeah, you were in the club. You were doing all kind of stuff. Wayne Day doing all that long. But God found you in the club. He found you out there on the streets. Uh, he found you in your home. Uh, he found you right where you are. And so uh, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, you can't seem to get away from God. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. You can go, you can avoid, you can try to do this and that, but God is going to be right where you start. He's going to be right where you finish. He's going to be on the in-between. <laughs> you must realize uh, when you look over your shoulder, uh, you see there is goodness and mercy uh, still stalking you, still tracking you down. Uh, oh, I feel this here tonight. Uh, when I hide behind a wall of offense, uh, you know just where to find me, God. Uh, I can't get away from the goodness and mercy of the Lord. Uh, there's a song I used to sing that every time I turn around, he's blessing me. Even when I don't expect it. When I turn this way, God is blessing me. When I turn that way, God is blessing me. Somebody say goodness and mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guarantee you, it still works today. I can't speak for anybody else, but all my life, uh, his goodness and mercy has been following me. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, through all kind of family trials and wrecked homes, through years of rejection and hurt, through years of hatred and despair, his goodness and mercy has been chasing after me. Even when I turned away from him and withdrew from the Lord, his goodness and mercy still came and he found me. Oh, yes, sir. His goodness and mercy was still coming after me. When he followed me, when the cabinets were empty, when I had no money, when there was no food on my table, he said, you got to understand, his goodness and mercy was right there with me. When I was at Moffitt Cancer Center with four-stage cancer last year, his goodness and mercy was with me. And he healed me when I needed a miracle. He followed me when my heart was broken. He followed me with the circumstance of life. I can't help it. I'm blessed with the goodness and mercy of God. Come on, how many want the goodness and mercy of God? Hallelujah. See, some of you here today, some of you here today need to start looking behind your shoulder. Mm -hmm. You need to start looking behind you. Uh, yeah, because wow, you're moping around saying how bad life is. And while you're moping around, complaining, sitting in your bowl of pity, feeling sorry for yourself, goodness and mercy is behind you. <laughs> it's following you. You think, just when you think that life can't get any worse, just when you think things are bad and they just won't get any better, but if you stop and take a look, if you stop and take a good look, you'll see his goodness and his mercy taking every step along with you. I'm helping somebody here tonight. You are blessed blessed uh, coming in. Uh, you're blessed going out. Uh, you're blessed in the field. Uh, you're blessed in the city. You're blessed because you are the righteousness of God and you are an heir 
to the promises of God. And this same God that brought you out of so much is chasing after you to give you the miracle that you need. Oh, uh, you got to shout it out to the devil. I'm blessed and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Come on, lift your voice. Say, I'm blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, say it again. I'm blessed. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me talk to you for a moment about uh, uh, just goodness. And then let me talk about mercy and let me take my seat to Psalms 31. Psalms 31 verse 19 says, how great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you. Uh, you lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the watching world. And let me tell you what it means here. For every person that will reverentially fear God, that will trust him, that will rely on him as their own true source of strength and provision, he has an abundance of goodness uh, waiting to give you. Mm -hmm. It is stored up. It is ready to be tapped into. And he will not, he will do it not merely in secret, but God will do it right before the whole world. He'll do it right before everybody, right before your enemies. In other words, he'll bless you right in front of everyone around you, and they will know just how blessed you are. God wants to bless your socks off here tonight. Listen here, because of the goodness of God. That's powerful because I believe God is getting ready uh, to bless us and show us people how good he really is in your life. Uh, some of you are going to be healed. Some of you are going to get a loved one saved. Some of you are going to get some peace. Some of you are going to get some things calm. Everyone is going to witness it. They're going to say, how did you make it? How did you get through? The odds were against you. You say, it was the goodness of the Lord. Mm, hallelujah. And you, they will know just how blessed you are. And I think it's time to obey the words of Psalms 107 where it says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Somebody say goodness. And then Romans 11, 22 says, notice how God is both kind and good and severe. He is severe towards, Romans 11, 22, he is severe toward those who disobeyed, but kind Good to you if you continue to trust in his kindness and his goodness. But if you stop trusting, you will also be cut off. That's Romans eleven twenty two. We see here uh, Paul is saying he will continue to be good to you if you will keep trusting in him. Uh, I realize it rains on the just and the unjust. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, the life of fulfillment through Christ Jesus uh, will bring on some of the greatest blessings of your life. Uh, far greater than the typical day by day things uh, like the air we breathe and the clothes on our back. Uh, it is in the times when we normally would fall into depression uh, that God brought us out. Hallelujah. Uh, it's the times when we don't have any direction in life uh, but God guides us towards his will. Uh, it's the time when the kids are sick late in the midnight hour and need to be healed. Uh, it's the times when you've lost a job and the bills keep coming in. That is when you discover how great and mighty is God. Hallelujah. There's, it's good to be in a relationship with God. Uh, to somebody say, he's good. Ah, yes, it's in. Then let me talk about the mercies of God. Uh, mercy, mercy, mercy is defined as God's kindness or pity on you and me. Uh, it's an aspect of God's love that causes him to help the pitiful or the miserable. In other words, people... <laughs> like you and me. Uh, it's the reason we are saved. Uh, it's the reason God keeps getting us out of the messes we drag ourselves into. Hello, somebody. Now, we got to admit, there's some things that's just going to happen. Life is going to happen. But there's some things we put ourselves in. And then we say, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I won't do it again until the next time. Hello, somebody. But God keeps getting us out of the messes we drag ourselves in. It is the reason why our carnal state God keeps on loving us. Uh, thank God he gives us mercy instead of justice. Uh, thank God he pardons and forgives us uh, and throws our sins uh, in the sea of forgetfulness. Uh, and he keeps on watching us and he keeps on blessing us with his mercy. Uh, let me tell you something about his mercies. Uh, it is the reason uh, you and I are not condemned straight to the pits of hell every day. <laughs> it's God's mercy. Somebody say mercy. Yeah, uh, the, the psalmist says, his mercy endures 
forever. Come on, say that. His mercy endures forever. Say it again. His mercy endures forever. It doesn't stop. It doesn't end. But his mercies endures forever. In Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23, it said, Is it of the Lord's mercies uh, that we are not consumed uh, because his compassions fail not? Uh, they are new every morning. Uh, great is thy faithfulness, O God. Uh, you and I need to get this revelation, revelation in our spirit uh, that God really wants us to be succeed in life uh, and in eternity. He wants uh, you to do the best what he's called you to do. Uh, I don't know why some folks uh, still believe that he is only a God of judgment and vengeance, uh, but refuse to believe God for his goodness uh, and his mercy, uh, his mercy and his grace. Uh, listen, I know that God can destroy both body and soul in hell, but this same Jesus uh, also said that he came that we could have life uh, and life more abundantly. I want the life more abundantly. Yes, sir. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So you've got to go ahead and not live in fear. Go ahead and not live afraid. But go ahead and do what the Lord called you to do. Because his grace and mercy are following you. His grace and mercy are with you. There's abundance for you. Let me tell you here, my brother and sisters, uh, if we see here in the scripture passage, uh, it says thou anointest my head with oil uh, my cup runneth over uh, we see here in verse 5 it says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, bless his name. God will set you up right in front of the folk that hate you the most. He will bless you right in front of the people that put you down, right in front of the people that counted you out. The Bible says the last shall be first and the first shall be last. God has set the table. Hallelujah. He set the table for you in the presence of enemies. Uh, it says there, it says, you anoint my head with oil. Uh, my cup runneth over. What has happened? The anointing. Uh, see, the anointing empowers us uh, to do something that, in a, that we couldn't do in our own strength. Uh, so when he gives you the anointing, uh, he gives you the power. And then you see there in verse 6, it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Uh, what's it saying there? Goodness and mercy. But it's not just saying goodness and mercy will follow you, but it says surely. It means absolutely, assuredly, certainly, clearly, definitely, evidently, uh, inexorably, plainly, undoubtedly, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, which means as long as you're on the world, you're on the earth, God is going to bless you. God, as long as you do what the Lord tells you to do, God is going to bless you. You may have obstacles in your way, but the Lord is going to bless you. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's not just talking about heaven, but dwelling in the house of the Lord means you're going to dwell in his presence. You're going to live in his presence. You say, Lord, I'm not going to do anything until you tell me what to do. You live in his presence. And when you live in his presence, you can lift your hands and bless him. When you live in his presence, you can give him a praise. Praise him. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his mercy. Praise him for he's a mighty good God. He's a mighty good God. I've got to take my seat. But listen here. You got to get this. You got the shepherd that's in front of you, leading you and guiding you. You got your enemies all around you. You got the rod on one side. You got the staff on the other side. And you got goodness and mercy coming behind you. But I'm so glad. I got the angels watching over me. Yes, I love the Lord because he heard my cry and he pitied every groan. Lord, as I live in troubled rise, I'm going to hasten to his throne. I thank God for his goodness and mercy. Yes. Everybody said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy. Let's all. Hallelujah. B flat, B flat. Yeah. Ain't no need to worry. 
what tomorrow is going to bring. It'll be all over in the morning. Ain't no need to worry, but tomorrow's gonna bring. It'll be all over in the morning. Come on, say that with me. Ain't no need to worry. But tomorrow's gonna bring It'll be all over In the morning Oh, ain't no need to worry But tomorrow's gonna bring It'll be all over In the morning Come on and play that song with me Listen, you don't have to worry, you don't have to fret. Goodness and mercy are following you. Too many times we worry about what's going to happen if I do this and what's the enemy going to do and I, don't, I have this fear, I've got afraid and, and we spend most of our time not doing what God called us to do. But you must realize that you've got the shepherd in front of you, the rod and the staff on either side of you, the angels watching over you, goodness and mercy behind you, and your enemies all around you. And you can do whatever it is God calls you to do. And here's the thing about it. It does not matter. You say, well, I've slipped, I've fallen, I can't get up, I've done some things, I've been a bad boy, I've been a bad girl. I've sinned. Well, that's what his goodness and mercy is. Mercy is for. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, yes, yes. His mercy. What does it say? For those who need pity, those who need his help. While you're there, and even in sanctuary, every head by every eye closed, but I want you. If you're one of those ones that slipped and fell and you've fallen away from God, just lift that hand up. If you're on Facebook, just give a, just give a thumbs up. We're going to pray for you right now. Lift that hand. Yes, just, I see your hands. I see your hands. I said, I said, it'll be all over in the morning. Father, we thank you right now for my brother, my sister, who loves you. And now, God, as they pray and they ask for forgiveness, forgive them of their sins. Come into their heart, Lord. Take control of their life. And whatever it is, God, that they struggle with, whatever it is that they deal with, whatever it is that proclivity, God, we ask you to clean, cleanse them right now. In the name of Jesus, wash them, God, in your blood so they can be made whole. We thank you for the victory in their life, the victory over strongholds. In the name of Jesus, thank you for forgiveness of sin. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And they shall no longer be the same from this moment on. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap those hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we're going to pray. Because many of you have needs. Hallelujah. How many have a need? Just a thing. You have a need. Whatever it is. You don't have to say what it is. God knows what it is. We don't have to touch and agree, but we're going to agree, agree as touching, as the Bible says. My faith with your faith that God is going to meet that need. Some of you say, I need a miracle by the end of this month. <laughs> and that's only tomorrow. But God can do it. He can turn it around. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. Father, I thank you right now. Every need that we lift up before you. Oh, yes, God. Release God right now. In the name of Jesus. 
we take our hands off of it. We give it up to you. Father, thank you for meeting the need. Thank you for turning things around. Thank you for healing our hearts. Thank you for healing our bodies. In the name of Jesus, it is done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Come on, clap those hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I felt something great there. Listen, I'm telling you, it doesn't take God long to do what he's got to do. And when you have your faith and you believe, listen, it shall be done. Don't forget, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Let me tell you something. That's been blessing me all week long. <laughs> some of you worried about somebody stalking you. You're worried about who, who's following, who's looking at you. Don't worry about it. Goodness and mercy. They got my back. Hallelujah. But other folks don't have my back. Goodness and mercy are right there behind me. All you got to do is follow the shepherd and let him lead you and everything's going to be all right. Come on, clap those hands and bless God one more time. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Ain't no need to worry what tomorrow's gonna bring. It'll be all over in the morning. One more time. Oh, ain't no need to worry what tomorrow's gonna bring. Sanctuary and online. God bless you. It's my prayer.